Hello everyone. Today we're going to be talking about what generative AI is, how it's created, what it's capable of, what it's good at, what it's not good at. Before we start though, I just want to say if you are a student of any kind, before you use generative AI in any of your assignments and any of your classes, please reach out to your teacher or your professor to make sure that generative AI use is allowed in your classroom. So we've all heard about ChatGPT, we've all heard about generative AI, we've all heard that it's either amazing and it can do everything for us and it's going to take over the world and it's going to take our jobs, or we've heard that it's this horrible thing that doesn't give us accurate information, it's going to take our jobs, it's going to take over the world. So what exactly is generative AI? To start to answer that question, we first have to understand how generative AI is created. So the big question is, where does AI, generative AI, ChatGPT, Copilot, all of those things, where does it get it, its information from? So we've all spent a lot of time out on the internet, so we kind of have an idea of what exactly is out there. You're going to find stuff like Google search engines or Wikipedia or social media. Maybe you'll find the web page for your local pizza place or maybe your local vet's office. All of that stuff online that we're used to looking at every day, that's where ChatGBT, Copilot, all these generative AIs get their information from, directly from the internet. So all of these companies like OpenAI who runs ChatGPT and Microsoft who runs Copilot, they have programs that will go out to the internet and they literally scrape everything off and they put it into their own systems. So now that these companies have all of this information from the internet, what do they do with it and how does that make AI? So they have to train their programs, which is all AI is, is a program on all of that information. So the first thing they do is they put all of that information into their program and they start asking it questions and they see what it starts to say. And this is where we actually get into some human interaction with the AI itself, is that somebody has to look at all of those responses that AI has given to the questions and see if it's something that seems reasonable, see if something that doesn't seem reasonable, and that's basically how AI training goes. It's just a whole circle of putting information into the program, having the program go through all that information and try to make associations, try to see what's next to what, what seems reasonable, asking the program questions, and then having humans look at those answers, see what AI has done right, see what AI has done wrong, and then feed all of that stuff back into the system. So like all first generation technology, there's some things that we should be concerned about. The first of those major concerns is actually power. So the training process is extensive and it's going through a lot of data. Imagine all of the information out on the internet in one place. That means we have to have lots of data centers, we have to have lots of servers, and of course if we have lots of data centers, we have lots of servers, we have to have lots of power. And right now we're trying to figure out where we might get that power from, and in some instances we're even using technologies that we have considered to be possibly unsafe in the past, um, possibly pollutants in the past, and we're having to start using those technologies just to meet the power demands of all of those data centers that have all of that information, that run all of those uh, permutations. All of our AI interactions cost just as much energy as charging our phones from zero to 100%. The next major concern we have with AI is actually diversity. So anytime we're looking at information, anytime we're looking to find information or generate new information, we want to make sure that we're taking into account everybody, not just the people who talk like us, the people who live in the same place that we do and who think the same way we do. We want to make sure that we've included everybody. Unfortunately, with AI, instead of that diverse group of people, we're actually getting the opinions of a very small set. Most information that AI is trained on is coming from Anglo-Saxon communities, so we're not getting information, say, from Latin America or South America. We're getting very little information from Asia, which means that the information that we are getting out of AI is equally as one-sided. 
The last major concern we want to talk about really quickly is can we trust the information that AI is giving us? So we ask it a question and it gives us some information and sometimes we're okay. Sometimes that information is accurate. We can use it in whatever way we need to use that information. But a lot of times that information is really suspect and there's a couple of reasons for this. The first really big reason is that generative AI doesn't actually care if it's giving you correct information or not. It's trained to make associations between words and phrases and thoughts and concepts as opposed to going to this huge vault of information that it has and pulling something out. Also, some of our AI systems still aren't directly connected to the internet, so they only contain information from when that information was scraped off the internet. So that means they may not be current, they may not have all of the most up-to-date information, and a lot of times you can't get AI to tell you where that information came from. One thing in particular that we need to keep in mind when we're dealing with AI is that AI remembers everything. We're starting to get some companies who are letting you opt out of having your information remembered, but the default setting is for AI to actually continue to learn through us and through the things that we ask it, the conversations we have with it, and what we tell it is good and not good. In a lot of instances, you look at the response you get and it'll ask you to tell it whether it did a good job or whether it did a bad job. Well, that means that all of that conversation we've just had with AI is still in the AI program and it's being used to learn and better answer other people's questions. So sometimes that's okay, but sometimes you want to be really careful about what kind of data and what kind of questions and what kind of prompts you're asking the AI so that you don't give it too much personal information. So far what we've been talking about is how AI was created. What does that actually mean for how AI performs, what it can do, and maybe more importantly, what do we think about AI right now? So what do we think AI is or what do we think it can do? The first thing a lot of people think about is Skynet, Terminator, is AI going to kill us all? In conjunction with that, we also think about robots, androids, maybe you think about data from Star Trek. Um, more personally right now, we think about how AI can replace people. Is it going to take our jobs? We think that AI thinks like a person, that it reasons the same way that we do. Well, eventually these may all be things that AI is capable of, though in the case of Skynet, we really hope that's not the case. What is it that AI currently does? It is really good at rephrasing text, whether it's text that you are getting from online, whether it's text that you are creating yourself. Um, it is really good at simplifying and or summarizing things. If you have notes from a meeting that you need to make shorter and you need to make sure that they are organized, it's really good at that. It's also getting to be really good at enhancing medical images, so allowing doctors to see things that they weren't able to see before. It's also helping us code, and it's helping us code with or without knowing a program language. I'm sure we've all heard a lot of text-to-speech, um, particularly on things like social media. Anytime you hear a dog talking on social media, that's probably not the dog. Um, it's also really good at creating personalized lessons. One of the big questions we have right now and one of the main selling points that we're getting from people who are trying to sell us on AI systems is that it's going to save us a huge amount of time. How true is that? And that's really kind of a two-part question. If you actually are new to AI, you haven't used it before, you're going to spend a lot of time having to play around with it, figuring out what it can do, figuring out the things that you do that it can help you with, and most importantly, figuring out how to communicate with it because it's not like the things that we're already used to doing. So, for instance, AI is not a search engine. You see here to the left, that's just a regular search that we do on Google on an almost daily basis. We put something in and then it gives us a lot of different places that we can look and we can go find the information for ourselves. 
You'll see on the right a response that we got from ChatGPT, where we asked it the same exact question, but instead of giving us places that we can go find the information, again, it's doing word association, but it's going out and it's going into its memory and it's creating something that it thinks that we want to see. We talked briefly before about whether or not we can trust AI and whether or not AI is going to give us our sources and maybe that's a determining factor on whether or not we can trust it. And you'll see to the left, ChatGPT, the free version, still doesn't give us sources. You can eventually have the AI probably give you where they found that information, but it's going to be really hard and it's going to take a while. And then we'll see on the right, we had a different AI that will, will actually give you the sources that it got that information so that you can double check it. But again, this is gonna take a little bit more time to double check the information that you've been given. So let's take a quick minute to talk about the things that AI currently isn't great at and the things that you should avoid using it for. The first of those things kind of goes along with what we were just talking about. You shouldn't be using it to find sources. It's just not built to do that. Like I said, it's not a search engine. It's a generative AI. It is built to generate information for you. You may eventually be able to get it to give you the sources it got that information from, but you're still going to have to go out and look at those sources anyway. Again, it's also not very good at diversity. The information that it has been trained on right now primarily comes from one type of culture, which means we're losing a lot of information from a lot of different places. And again, it means a lot of the information that's getting spit out is only really going to be relevant to maybe Europe and North America. It's getting better at creative material, but it's still not quite there yet. To be truly creative, there's a lot of different stuff that we don't think about that has to go into that process, but at the moment, AI just isn't capable of. A lot of what makes us creative are all the things that we've seen, we've been through, we've learned, we've done. And AI has no access to that. So if you try to tell it to create something from your point of view, it's not going to be able to do that. And that just makes things that it creates have a little less substance. So that's all the stuff AI is bad at, but there is some stuff that AI is pretty good at right now. So it's really good at helping us brainstorm. You can't just go in there with no idea of what you're doing, but if you kind of know what you're looking for, even in a vague sense, you can work with it and it'll help you get to what you want. It's really good at tutoring. So if there's something that you're not particularly good at that you need to do for school, need to do for your work, you can go out and use a generative AI and have the AI walk you through all the steps that you need to take to get the final product that you need. And if you get stuck on something, you can ask generative AI to explain it to you in a different way. AI is really good at summarization, and that's because of the way that it is built. It's built to make associations between words, and because of that, it's easy for it to summarize documents. It's also, for the same reasoning, really good at organization. So that's just a really quick introduction to the basics of AI, how it's created, how it's currently working, what it's bad at, what it's good at, what we might be able to use it for. Again, though, if you are a student, please make sure that you reach out to your teacher or your professor before you use AI in any way in any of your classes. Still working on your assignment? Or you want to learn more about how to use your QV library? For more helpful tutorials and information, check out our library website, chat with a librarian, email us, call us, or text us. We're always happy to help, and we're here to help you succeed.